Uh, Bishop, you decried the use of generalities in describing uh, the uh, immigrant population uh, right before you then used a generality of 12 million. You repeated the same talking point straight out of the DNC, 12 million aspiring citizens. Um, I'm assuming that you are not counting the killer of Miss Wilkerson's son in that 12 million. I'm not understanding your question. Well, you said there's 12 million aspiring uh, Americans here. And, and my point is all 12 million aren't aspiring and all 12 million couldn't pass any background check, even one by the ACLU or a criminal defense attorney. Surely you're not including the person that killed her son and the 12 million aspiring Americans. I'm not sure that I use the term aspiring. Uh, well, you said American. 12 million. You, you, you spoke as if the entire population is deserving of citizenship. That's precisely what you said. I do believe that the 12 million who are here need to be considered for a pathway to citizenship. How about the one that killed her son? How about the one that killed her son? It's a criminal. I hope he's been dealt with as a so criminal. So it's 12 million minus not, one. That's How about not the one the that killed unity. Again, it's 12 million minus one. How criminal. about the one that killed Miss Miss Root's daughter? That's a criminal case. All right, so that's and 12 million minus two. Policy. How about the gang members in, in Sheriff Jenkins' jurisdiction? If we're talking about safety in our communities, then let's How talk about, about safety in How about the gang in members in Sheriff Jenkins' jurisdiction? Are those part of the 12 million with which you made reference? I do not know. What you, I do you don't know, know whether or not a I gang member know, should be included on a path to safety. What I do know is that our communities deserve greater safety. And it's no, not going I, to happen I, I, when we pick victims I just respectfully disagree with you, Bishop. Um, American citizens should not be victimized by crime. I think we can agree with that. And American citizens should not have to wait until someone who is not here legally commits another crime before we decide to get serious about enforcing our immigration laws. So my question to you is this. Of the 12 million, if that number is right, minusing the one that killed Ms. Wilkerson's son, minus the one that killed Ms. Root's daughter, minus the gang members, minus the 300,000 that have already been adjudicated to have committed another criminal offense, how would you go about identifying the good ones from the bad ones? The way we identify good ones from the bad ones every single day, by well, looking at their character, by seeing how they Well, how are we them. supposed to do that if we don't even know who they are, Bishop? Well, we won't know who they are if we continue to treat them the way we're treating no, them. No, 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 no. There's a way to know. There's a no, uh, but but you just said you don't like the way that we've chosen to do it. You don't want local no, law enforcement. I, don't, I do not think that that is a helpful way. Well, let me ask you this, Immigrant Bishop. Immigrant communities want to help. Wh they want why to keep don't their community you? safe, but they won't come forward if they think that they're going to pick be picked up by us. Oh, no. We, it's we, going to no, threaten we, their lives. We, we saw a children, perfect going example. To be left behind. It's going to be really tough for the court reporter if you continue to talk while I'm asking questions. She's got a tough enough job. So how about we just agree to go one at a time, okay? How about Kate Steinle's murder in San Francisco? That's a sanctuary city. You, you wrote an op-ed on it. Do you remember that? I did. And you advocated for policies that prevent gun violence. You remember writing that? Yes. We have some of those policies. In fact, we call them laws. There's a law against shooting someone on a pier who's walking beside her father. We already have that law. We already have a law where convicted felons can't purchase or possess firearms. Do you know that Kate Steinle's killer was a convicted felon? Yes. We, all, we also have a law that if you're not here legally, either overstay a visa or cross the border without permission, that you cannot legally possess or purchase a firearm. Did you know that was already yes. a law? So what policies are you advocating for that would have saved Kate Steinle's life in addition to the ones we already have? That's a very tragic situation, but you cannot blame all immigrants. Uh, no, I, I, I'm not. I'm just blaming the one that shot the her. For the action of one person. No, 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 and no. That's what no. you are your, doing. Your approach is to wait until the murder and then do the deportation. And yeah. my approach is try to have as few body bags as we can possibly have, try to identify those that are not aspiring citizens before they kill somebody's son or daughter or daughter in San Francisco. That's my objective, to identify them before the crime. So my question to you is, how are you going to do that? I would argue that we need trust policies where immigrants, documented and undocumented, can come forth to report crimes 
and to report when they too have been victims of crimes without the fear of being deported. We need that kind of trust. Otherwise, you know what, these I families will not come forth. Immigrants do not want gangs in this country or in their communities. Uh, Many listen, of them I, you don't hear me talking gangs. in generalities, Bishop. That was you that did that. I made a point in my opening of saying that we shouldn't be talking to generalities. I do find it bitterly ironic that you are talking about trust among the immigrant community, and you don't even trust local, lo local law enforcement to enforce our immigration laws. I find that richly ironic. Why don't you trust local law enforcement to enforce our immigration laws? I do not trust the procedures and policies under which we are expecting governance and policing to happen well, in our community. Bishop, you trust them in murder cases. You trust them in child sex abuse cases. You trust them in narcotics cases. You trust them in kidnapping cases. You trust them in traffic violation cases. You trust them in every category of crime, except you just don't want the sheriff enforcing immigration laws. And yet you want to talk about building trust with the law enforcement community, and you don't trust him to enforce immigration laws, even though you trust him to enforce every other category? And you want to talk about trust. Did I hear you right? I want to talk, talk about trust policies, yes. Uh, well, I want to talk about the law. I, I, I want to talk about the law. You said you were a nation of immigrants. That may be true. We're also a nation of laws. And the ability to pick and choose the ones that you want based on political expediency or your view of theology is going to undermine this republic very quickly. And, and as a result, we'll have more panels with more moms. With laws that, of this country change when we realize that they're immoral or unjust. Well, then you can run for Congress and change the law. But as it stands right now, we're going to enforce it. If you don't like the law, you can change it. But what you can't do is just selectively decide which ones you want to enforce and which ones you don't, because that's called anarchy. Congressman, we have broken immigration policies. That's what needs to be addressed. OK. Uh, but you just sat there and listed all the laws that we passed to try to address it. You didn't like a single one of them. You didn't like the law. You didn't like the law empowering local law enforcement. You don't like the fact that we would deny federal funding to sanctuary cities that harbor people like the man who killed Kate Steinle. So it's not a question of passing laws, Bishop. With all due respect, it's a question of passing laws you like. A question of passing laws that are just. All right, and and, and and if there's anything more relative in the world than the word just, I don't know what it is. So uh, rather than aspire to justice, I'm just going to aspire that we actually enforce the law because that is the community's manifestation of justice. We take what we think about justice and mercy, and then we codify it in something we call the law. And by the way, Bishop, these aspiring citizens that you talk about, the 12 million minus one, two, God knows how many, and their oath of citizenship, there are a half dozen references to the law a half dozen references to the law in the oath that we expect new citizens to take. I think it would be a really neat idea if we actually enforced the law so that citizenship oath actually had a little bit of meaning because right now it doesn't seem to.